Hey, namaste everybody. Lise Romano here, the Breakthrough Life Coach. And today we're coming live. I love these live streams because I get to interact with everybody um, in real time. And today I have been inspired by a message that I received by a um, YouTuber who watched a bunch of my videos. And I want to, I have permission. I have asked her if I can read her email to all of you, because I think many of us will resonate with what she has shared. And it definitely touched my heart. So she wrote, hi, Lisa. Uh, I discovered your videos just a few days ago. I listened, I have been listening to them ever since. They helped me to discover the truth that I unconsciously did not want to discover for years, despite the fact that I went through therapy, books, programs, knowings of teachers like Eckhart Tolle, Greg Braden, Joe Dispenza, and many others, but only you showed me what was what was my family dynamic and why. My father died just three weeks ago. Ever since that day, I wanted to die. Just follow him loyalty to the grave. And I didn't know exactly why, because I thought his influence over me was over because he was dead. I confronted him over two months ago for being so violent and abusive when I was a child. And it was almost like he died because he realized that because I called it out by name. And I was so codependent that as a good loyal daughter, I would go to the grave after him, like an atonement for being open and honest and acting in front of him like an adult woman for the first time in my life. After his death, I started to fall like into some black hole, deeper and deeper. Friends or anyone who tried to encourage and help me only annoyed me. Like I didn't want to be convinced that I was worthy of even staying alive after he died. And one day during my another breakdown, I found your video. And it was like a battle inside me with my programming at first. But something made me watch it again and find more and more. Till I clearly started to see, until I admitted that my father was a narcissist with psychopathic tendencies, and that my mother is a narcissist who only seeks her own value by destroying my self esteem and my independence. That both parents hated themselves and hated each other. That my mother hated anything in me that reminded her about herself, and she hated also anything within me which reminded me of her father, of, of my father. I ended up not being able to feel myself, to recognize what I feel, and to know or know who or what I am to the point that I developed diagnosed autistic indicators and borderline symptoms above other issues. And now finally your videos probably saved my life and I feel like it's a breaking point. It's all coming back to the law of attraction but from com a completely new perspective. It's the begin beginning of me. I'm 36 and I'm not my father and I've decided to live. Thank you for your work. And I have like, I'm covered in goosebumps. So I wrote a little bit back and, and to her back and forth. And then she wrote back and she said, yes, you can share it. Who knows? It might help someone else. Nothing is separate. It's a chain reaction. Until you know why you're in a mess, until you discover what kind of a mess it is, you can do affirmations, meditations, focus on the present moment, but all these techniques and tools only will bring you back to your mess in order to discover it. There's no other option. The part of the program is a camouflage of the program. A child's loyalty to the program is the loyalty to the parents. So the child would do anything to justify the parents and to protect the program. My parents did that without even knowing, just to protect their parents. It's like fighting with an invisible enemy. You don't know where the attacks are coming from and every guess of direction is towards the enemy, somewhere around him, but never at him. So um, I just wanna make sure I'm shutting that down. I just am so happy and um, just really, really um, inspired that this young woman, so young in her thirties, has been able to break through and feel for the first time in her life that she has a direction. She's beginning to understand that it wasn't me, it was my programming. But I wanted to have a, a live stream. I just wanna say hello to everybody. Hi, Ellen, hi, Catherine, hi, Sage. Um, hi, Lean, I'm so glad that you were able to catch us live too. Um, and, you know, um, 
Lee Loss has just said, I'm 67. I'm so excited about the change you're teaching me. Freedom at last. Sage just said, Lisa, you saved my life. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Eric just said, it's a Jewish gay son of a mother who is a narcissist. That's a rough one. And possibly father too from Brooklyn, New York. She was cruel to all of her children. And my sister passed away five years ago, who she was jealous of. This seems to be... Um, Joan just said, I'm feeling for the first time in my life at 52. Um, I mean, it's like incredible, you know, so many of us and my work is really, you know, I, um, I have followed the greats myself, including uh, Dr. Dispenza, including um, uh, Wayne Dyer, love him, Louise Hay, um, Esther Hicks, you know, um, I've, you know, I've, I've followed the best of the best, you know, but this is not a criticism. This is just an observation. What I felt was missing was like what this, this uh, viewer just said, I was doing the affirmations. I was doing, I was trying to stay in the present moment, but what nobody was saying is what about the programming? What about the part of us that is 95% unconscious? If I'm only 5% conscious, then the affirmations are in the conscious realm. So how much power do I have in the conscious realm if I'm not taking into account what has been downloaded in the subconscious mind? Now, here is, here is what this YouTube viewer, I think, has done an amazing job pointing out. We have an undying loyalty to our parents. We really do. We are all born to adore our parents. And it doesn't matter if they abuse us. You know, they've done studies where children who are, are trying to be removed from abusive homes, they're clinging to the legs of their parents. They don't want to leave their parents. They want to be loved by their parents, right? No matter, no matter what these parents have done, children want to have their parents' approval. They absolutely desire it. And I love you too, Sarah. I just said, I love you. I love you too. I really do. We are one. A lot of us, I think, are falling between the cracks. You know, um, I think those of us who, you know, um, haven't had it easy at home, those of us who um, admit that we didn't have the best childhoods and we are finally getting to the point where we're able to say, wait a minute, you know, maybe my parents were well intended but they mess me up. You know, um, I think even the, the best parents in the world are going to screw up from time to time, right? We all have an ego and we all have programming. So from time to time, you know, parents are going to mess up their children or, or harm their children, although they don't, they don't mean it. I think it's very, 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 very easy to wound a child. You have to remember, we, you and me have to accept that we were subconscious and we were in hypnotic brainwave states and at least until the age of seven you know um my daughter just told me she was with her boyfriend's family and they said to a four-year-old um don't chew on the glow stick you know the glow stick is has that uh chemical in it that you know that you know you, you shake it at nighttime and it can light up a stadium or whatever it's a glow stick so she said to the little boy who was four don't chew on that because there's poison in there and it can make you sick and his response was, oh, my God, am I going to die? I mean, a four-year-old child, a six-year-old, seven-year-old child, right? The adults in their life are everything to them. You know, I was at the aquarium yesterday, and, you know, it was so sad. There was a mom and a dad whose child was, who wanted, all he wanted to do was get out of the stroller. He couldn't have been more than two and a half years old, two years old. And I overheard the mom saying, if you don't knock it off, I'm going to throw you in the tank with the sharks. That is a real threat. You talk about PTSD. This little baby is looking at these mammoth sharks in this tank. And mommy is threatening to throw him into the tank because he wants to get out of the stroller. So this child is, is being traumatized, right? And I'm, it's hard for me. And I'm sure you guys, the more you wake up, it, it can be really, really difficult. You know, I caution my moderators and I caution... Um, the people that have taken my class, you know, the 12-week class, that 
you know, when you start waking up and you start realizing like what you went through and, and how that led to the life that you're living, right? And you start looking around and you're around people and you hear the way parents are talking to their children. It is like they're, the next 20 or 30 or 40, 50 years of this child's life flashes before your eyes. You, you just have a glimpse into what this kid is experiencing, you know, day in and day out. And it isn't difficult to understand how how strenuous it is for this little boy to to have parents that threaten to throw him into a shark tank because he's squirming and he wants wants to get out of his stroller like all the other two and three year old kids, right? So, do these parents think that they're wounding this kid? Probably not, you know. And I even watched the dad squeeze his leg, and he was he was telling the kid to be quiet and to shut up. You know, so worried about what everyone else was going to think about his kid squirming. Who the hell cares what anybody else thinks about your kid squirming? What's most important is what you're teaching this child, you know? And so, you know, I'm standing there. I'm like, oh, my God, this little boy is going to grow up loyal to his mother and father, just like the rest of us, you know, probably unaware at how um, this everyday type of um talking the way they the disrespect for the child at two and a half or three, you know, how this is, is going to replay out in this child's life. You know, if these parents are that unaware that they can say to a baby, who's just trying an innocent little baby, who's just, I want to get out. I want to see the fish. I want to see the fish. If these parents think it's okay to say, if you don't, don't knock it off, I'm going to throw you into the tank with the sharks. And, and they felt comfortable to say it around lots of other people who had their kids on their shoulders looking at the sharks, right? If they think that's okay, I can, I literally was like, oh my God, I was so overwhelmed because I was like, oh my, what is this baby's life going to be like? You know, what is he dealing with when they go back into the car? You know, how do they treat him when he asks for ice cream or how do they treat him when he, when he acts up and there are people around children are limbic, right? which means that they don't have the ability to control their emotions. Here they have adults, right, that aren't able to control their emotions. But we want a two-and-a-half-year-old, right, who has a very underdeveloped brain to understand and to control his emotions because the parents are worried about what other people think. We have to move past that, right? And we have to, those of us who have children and grandchildren or who want to have children, we really, really have to understand that, that what is happening between a child's ears is the most important thing, you know, and what other people think is really irrelevant. We have got to get past worrying about um, what other people think about our family or about our children. I think that the entire society is codependent. You know, um, I've been criticized here and there by people who say, oh, Lisa, you know, you're, you're stretching this term codependency. You know, I don't think so. I think if, Co what does the word codependent mean? I'm codependent on something outside of me for a sense of me, right? I am codependent on something that's out outside of me to make me feel good about me, right? So if I'm codependent as a parent on fitting in with the other parents and all the other babies are quiet, well, maybe because they're not strapped to a stroller or an aquarium, maybe because they actually want to get out and look at the the fish in the aquarium, you constrain a child, they want to be out. So whatever. But if you're the type of parent who, because your child is acting up, you have to exert power over the child with harassment and fear and intimidation, because you're worried about what the other people think about your kid acting up, you're codependent, right? Which is crazy to me. I understand it because I used to be like that. People who are severely codependent are worried about what other people think, right? Which means that they're assuming that they know what other people think. And in most cases, it's negative. In most cases, somebody who's suffering from codependency is assuming that what other people are thinking about them is negative. Why? Because that is their programming. That is their experience. You know, when I put a bathing suit on, I just got back from a short vacation for my husband. Boy, did I ever need it. But here, here I was in my bathing suit, right? And here goes the programming. 
I'm assuming that I'm being judged for my cellulite and my spider veins. People could love my bathing suit or not be thinking any of those things at all. But all of those thoughts that I was that were in my head represent programming. They represent what I heard growing up about women's bodies. My father was highly critical of women's bodies. My mother was highly critical of her body. Um, and so this it wasn't a, a place where, you know, growing up, it wasn't okay to be you. It wasn't okay to age. Actually, actually, aging was looked at a very bad thing. You know, my father always made comments about my mom aging. So that is part of my subconscious programming. Now, as someone who is fairly awakened and does what she can to stay aware, self-aware of my thoughts, because if I don't run my thoughts, my thoughts are going to run me, right? So as I thank heaven, I've learned to observe my feelings. And that is my main goal every day is to observe what's happening in between my ears. Because if I don't, if I don't, I'm going down a rabbit hole. So that's, that's essentially what I teach my private clients and those in, that take my classes. This is what I teach. This is what I try to share on social media, including YouTube. No matter what happened to you, you have to understand that what happened to you created a program. It created a story. And by sh the sheer nature of what it means to be a human being, we are unconscious. So the story is there and we're hearing the story but we are identifying with the story, right? We are reacting to the storyline unconsciously. And I think that is the crux of my work. I want to wake people up. I want them to understand that, sure, you might feel like crap. You might judge yourself. You might judge other people. You might feel despondent and you might feel like you're not good enough. Sure. You might, you know, over empathize with people. You might think it's your job to fix people. Sure, but that's only your programming. Now, what we have to figure out is why is that your programming? Why is it that there are some people who um, don't have the issues that you have, right? I saw women on the beach in string bikinis, right? And I, I, all I could do that, you know, someone might say maybe they shouldn't have been in a string bikini. But whenever I see somebody who's, who's in a bathing suit and she's rocking it, I don't care what size she is. My first thought is, you go, girl. I am so proud of you. Because to me, that represents somebody who is in her own space. She's in her own experience. And she's not all caught up in her own subconscious mind worrying about what other people think. And I think that that's what pisses me off about codependency, is that if you have been a victim of being judged, right? If you're, if you're um, somebody who doesn't feel or feels like you have to fit into a certain box to be good enough, right? You don't realize the dogma. You don't realize the programming. You don't realize the story, the invisible um, story that is playing out in your head that your mind is going down the rabbit hole with. You don't realize that there's a story that you can gain control over and go, wait a minute, that's not me. That's just my programming. I don't want to think those thoughts. That's not my thought. You know, I remember when I was first becoming aware of, wait a minute, this is programming. Wait a minute. I judge myself because my mother judged me and my father judged my mother and he judged me. You know, um, I never had a male person, a male in my life, not judge me. Even my uncles judged me. You know, so my experience of men was very critical. Men judge women. And my mom, because she was, she did not have, in my own opinion, she didn't have her own self. Um, so uh, hold on, dear ones. Um, there's obvious, there's a troll. So you guys are saying that there's a troll. So if you guys can identify the name of the troll, then we can block the troll. So I'm going to try to go back and say, sometimes we have to block trolls. It's very sad, but um, yeah, if you guys can just let me know who you think the troll is. Call it out, dear ones. Um, call it out. I'm looking. Uh, okay, so yeah, just so yes, if okay, okay. Let me see. Thank you, Alan. I'm gonna see if I can find this person. He may be hiding now, or she may be hiding, hiding. But I'm gonna go, go. Um, 
Okay. Okay, let me just, I want to make sure I'm going to block the right person. You guys just have to. Hi, Faza. Okay, so you guys are all saying it's the, I just, I don't want to block the wrong person. Okay, let me just write it down. Just give me a second, guys. You know, there's no reason to get upset, you know, with um, people that troll your channel or try to like piss on your parade. You know, what I teach my, um, what I teach my coaching clients is control what you can. And, um, you know, then that's it. Focus on that. And, um, that person has been deleted, um, from the chat. So you guys can just let me know if, if you see any more and hopefully it's difficult cause I'm, a, I'm on a train of thought and I have the chat going, but the chat is very important live because you never know what somebody who is highly below the veil, um, and, um, who is, um, you know, what they can possibly do. So um, anyway, getting back to um, what we were talking about is um, when we are suffering from, um, hold on one second, hold on one second. Okay, I think um, I'm going on the advice of you guys. Um, Hey, that there have been trolls pushing religious agenda. Okay. Okay. We got it. I think we took care of it. I'm learning. This is all very new to me. I throw spaghetti up against the wall. I'm not afraid to make a mistake. Anybody judge judges me. That's not, that's not me. That's a projection of them judging themselves. So anyway, dear ones, if you're codependent, right? Um, the one thing that, that really drives me crazy about codependency is that if you're codependency, codependent, lots of times you don't realize it. You're just depressed. You're worried about what other people think. It's difficult for you to start a project or if you start a project, it's difficult for you to, to um, finish the project. Um, you enable people. You question whether or not you should actually put, put up with certain behavior. Like you could be dating somebody who curses at you um, or somebody who hits you, somebody who criticizes you or minimizes you, you know, someone that you're, that is just creating a lot of, um, resistance in your soul. And you will, you will doubt the, the way you feel, and you will doubt you have a right to feel the way you feel. Right. And so when you're codependent, there's this self doubt issue. Why? Because you never felt securely attached to, people that you thought really loved you when you were a child, that that ability to create a bond was interrupted. And a parent's greatest job is to instill into a child that it is, that child has a right to feel what they feel, that what that child thinks and, and desires is valid. And when you are instead taught that what you think is invalid or when the people that you love the most are beating you or they're abusing you. And in the case of the person who wrote me this amazing letter, um, she said that her mother obviously hated her. Like she felt that little girls and little boys are not supposed to feel like their mothers and fathers hate them. That is, that defies the natural laws of the universe. Like I'm not even kidding. Like Gaia, right? Loves us. Gaia supports us or the word we use to describe mother earth, right? Gaia, Gaia supplies us with water. Gaia supplies us with air, right? So when we think about what is supposed to happen, when we have parents who absolutely make us doubt that we are worthy, then we doubt that we are worthy. Our internal guidance, our ability to stay focused on our own internal guidance gets corrupted. We don't trust our guidance, right? And so now here we are adults. We could be 50 or 60 years old inside relationship dynamics with people that we don't, it doesn't really feel right, but we don't think that we have a, we think maybe we're making too much of this, you know, maybe it's no big deal, you know, um, you know, I've had, you know, plenty of situations in my family life and as well as coaching with clients, dealing with people who are living with people who are on drugs and my clients or a family member have enabled the person taking drugs 
and they've lost work, you know, they've lost sleep, they've given them money, they've paid for their rent, you know, so this is a codependent type of an experience where you, here we are taking care of someone who should be taking care of themselves. And in that, all that gobbledygook, we are not asking ourselves, well, how do we feel about this person's addiction? Or how do we feel about this person asking me for rent money again? How do I feel about that? We don't ask ourselves how we feel because it's not part of our programming to be asked, how do you feel, right? If parents don't give us the message that what we feel um, is, is valid, right, then we don't know to ask ourselves what we feel. It's just not part of our programming. When I started waking up, I began to realize it was like I just began to see my, my brain as a computer. And I was like, I don't have this input to love myself. It's like that chip doesn't exist. I live as an extension of everyone else. It's my job to make sure that everybody else is happy, you know? And so if my friend is an alcoholic and she needs money, then I have to give her money because she's an alcoholic. No, wrong, wrong, that's wrong, no. Wrong, wrong, wrong. But when you are codependent, you're not checking in with yourself. You have very poor boundaries. You have very low self-esteem. You really do think that your your worth and your purpose is to fix other people, right? And here we go, down rabbit holes. When you have grown up and you've suffered at the hands of a narcissistic or psychopathic father who is physically abusive, you know, you are not taught that you are valid. You're not. You're taught that you are invalid, right? And what happens is we do have this undying loyalty to our parents, and that is natural, okay? But what has happened to us in our environment is unnatural. It is absolutely unnatural. So we, here we have this great conflict. So it's absolutely natural to love our parents, right? absolutely natural. What's not natural and what is unnatural is to be abused by your parents. That's unnatural, right? And unfortunately, when you are abused in childhood, the, the likelihood of you becoming abused in adulthood is absolutely um, increased, right? Because it's all you know. It's all you know. What I teach in my master class. Um, after the 12 week is that you have to wake up, right? You have to heal these vibrational patterns and they are vibrational patterns. You, we are what, 85% water, okay? You know, um, the Japanese doctor, I forgot his name, but the Japanese doctor, most of you probably know what I'm, the hell I'm talking about. And please add it to the chat if you do. The doctor who did the experiments with water and then took pictures of the water after people prayed over them, after monks prayed over the water, and how beautiful these, these water crystals looked after people prayed over them, right? Um, and then, and then we, have, um, we have the experiment where people were asked to send these by these these this, these water bottles or this water these glasses of water negative energy whether it was hate or greed or whatever and when they um, took slides of the water that was that was sent negative emotions it was absolutely devastating the crystals looked evil right whereas the crystals that were um, sent loving vibrations they actually looked angelic right. It was just absolutely amazing. Now, I like to connect the dots. If I'm good at anything, it's good. I'm good at connecting dots. You are mostly water. You're mostly water. So if you've lived in a vibrational experience where there was sibling abuse, where there was domestic violence, 
where there was bullying in school, where you were sexually abused, where, you know, um, your parents knew that you were being abused, but they called you a liar. I've heard that so many times as a coach. Um, it, if you were in a war-torn country, right? If you came from a home where there was general violence, right? Um, I want you guys to pay attention to the vibrational experience that you lived in as a child, right? So that will help explain, um, yeah, and Sarah just said, who feels like no one would believe you if you told them how you were treated by your mom. No, people don't because it's not, it's not their fault. It's because it's not natural. The first instinct, and I would just be careful about sharing too much information in a live chat. You never know who you're talking to in a live chat. So I would just use common sense in the chat with um, what you're sharing. I'm just, just throwing that out there. Um, um, so um, we I want you guys to pay attention to the fact that you're a multidimensional human being. You are mostly water, and which means you're emotionally, you are mostly a vibrational being that has been affected by the vibrations of your environment, right? And so think about these experiments with water where they're actually seeing changes in the molecular structure uh, or the patterns of water droplets based on the environments the water is placed in. So you have to see yourself as a bottle of water that was placed inside an environment that was not your fault. It was not your fault. And now these patterns that you experience day in and day out have created vibration, vibrational patterns within you. So now add in now, okay, that's the vibrational aspect of you. Now add in the fact that you were in a hypnotic brainwave state up until about the age of seven. Now we're talking about the psychological you. Now we're talking about your personality, which has been affected by, again, your environment. We do not live in a vacuum. That's why if you feel bad, that's because someone made you feel bad, right? If you do bad things, that's because you had bad experiences. People who came to this planet and had awesome experiences with awesome parents and awesome siblings and awesome aunts and uncles, people who felt loved, were never bullied, who were encouraged to follow their dreams, okay? You know, they're living their life. They're yachting or sailing or whatever. You know, they're just living their life non-codependent, accepting how they feel, somebody bumps up against them that they don't like, they just go the other way. They don't try to get this person to see their point. They don't try to fix people, right? They're just like, oh, okay, you know, they're kind of ornery, so I'm just going to go over here, right? And so, you know, and like Misery just said, yes, when you know better, you do better, better like Maya Angelou says, right? So we're all up here to learn. Every human being has been incarnated to evolve. Evolve what? Evolve your vibrational patterns, evolve your personality, evolve your ego, evolve the past and transition and transcend. The tough thing is how do we do that? That's that's really about life skills and there are absolutely um um twilight moon said obviously this is this is too dumb down. Hold on. And you should explain vibrations and energy. I'm really sorry that you feel that way, Twilight Moon. Um, it looks like a lot of people are really enjoying this. Um, uh, rather than get too much into energy, my agenda here is today, my agenda here today, being that's my live stream, is to connect the dots. Um, and uh, hold on one second. We have to delete someone. Bye-bye. Okay, we had to delete somebody. Um, and so um, what I wanted to hopefully um, get to today was to explain to people that it is unnatural to feel unloved by the being who created you. It is unnatural. Thank you, Andre. Andre just said you're doing great, Lisa. Thank you, dear one. It is unnatural to um, feel and to experience abuse um, hold on one second. This is sometimes we have to, um, we have to 
deal with people and put them in time timeouts and stuff, which is so sad. But what are you going to do? It's part of life, right? Somebody, somebody that is that bumps up against me these days. I don't fight that person anymore. I'm just like, okay, namaste. I bow to love and lighten you, and I go this way. You know, I just go on with my shtick. Where years ago, um, it would have been much more difficult for me to like deal with. And I would think, oh my God, this person doesn't like me. And I would feel so wounded because it would trigger all my, my programming. But these days I know that I'm enough. And hopefully you guys um, are feeling that way more and more as well. And so it's unnatural for us to feel unloved by our parents. Absolutely unnatural. It is unnatural for us to be beaten and abused by our parents, right? And so what we have to understand also is that it's unnatural to experience that. It's not, it's not right. But it's also natural for us to want to experience their love. And so we have this great conflict that we absolutely need to resolve if we're going to free ourselves and break through and be free. What the YouTube, YouTube viewer shared with me was that she felt her, her entire life that this loyalty to her parents, even though they were highly abusive and how when her mother looked at her, she felt like her mother hated her and how she didn't want to see that. Here she was 35 or 36 years old and she did not want to see that her parents had caused this drama. That's because it is unnatural to push your parents away. It is natural to want to create that bond and pull them in. So that's the problem with codependency and attachment trauma is that below the veil of consciousness, we have this tug of war going on and we don't even see it. And we have issues that are keeping us blind to what is really, really the issue that we need to confront. And the issue is who has wounded me? How has this affected my life? What is my programming as a result of being wounded, right? And who do I need to pin the tail on the donkey? I need to pin the tail on the donkey because I have to understand. And once you do, the brain has the ability to self-correct. I'm I and the tons of people that I've coached privately and have taken my 12 week breakthrough coaching program are evidence that when you present the human brain brain with information that helps it understand itself, it has the ability to reorganize itself. You know, we are stuck in the amygdala, which is part of the limbic brain. We are stuck. We are stuck reacting. We are stuck um, in patterns between the amygdala and the hippocampus. We are stuck in reactive mode, right? I think a lot of borderline issues, borderline personality for those of us who um, suffer from some of those some of those symptoms. You know, if you go. Yeah. And Sean just said, that's how I got borderline personality disorder. Now, Sean, I would like to ask you to um, consider it not a disorder. Just let's be open-minded here. Let's call, let's call it a symptom of something deeper. When you have something happen in, on the planet that is unnatural you you see devastating results, right? So when if you think about yourself as an organism, right? Each and each of us was trauma, absolutely. If you think about, um, you know, if you think about um, an or yourself as an organism, and you think about your home as a petri dish, and you think that you understand that you're that what you deserved as a, as a, as an organism was to be part of a petri dish in in a culture medium that was conducive to growth so that you could grow and become who and what you were supposed to become which is a divine human being capable of immense probably um infinite amazing um things on this planet. You know, you have been born a creator, but um, some people said it's also a brain dysfunction. It can be. Borderline personality can be. I mean, if you have, um, you know, lesions on the amygdala, right, that's going to create an issue. 
If you have a tumor in the rage center of the brain, that's going to cause an issue. If you have um, a brain disorder, if you have, like I said, brain tumors, brain lesions, um, if you have an area of your brain that you've suffered like a trauma to an area of your brain, your entire personality can shift. That's still not your fault. That is a result of something that happened to you that is not you, okay? We have to begin to understand that those of us who have been traumatized, we consider yourself an organism that has been put into a hostile environment. Now, what happens to our organism is a symptom of the hostile environment. It doesn't represent who we are, right? So if we were able, to, if we had been fortunate enough to be placed into a culture medium as an, as an organism that was conducive to growth, then we would, our adult experience would be much different. Frankie Robertson just said, I stopped blaming my family and look for the causes as to why the behavior had been so significant in my family. Um, Ellie just said, years of taking pills for bipolar, there was never the answer I needed in those, those pills. You're right. And I think, you know, that's part of why, you know, I do what I do and I do it so, you know, adamantly is because I too, I went to four or five therapists and no one ever said codependency. No one ever, no one ever said, well, you know, tell me about the relationship you had with your mother. Did you grow up feeling loved? Did you feel like your needs were validated? Um, did you feel like you were taught that it was good to express yourself? Did you feel um, like you were encouraged to follow your dreams? Were you criticized? Were you shamed? Were you blamed? Were you chastised? Were you embarrassed? Were you um, beaten? Were you um, uh, taught that what you thought is um, irrelevant? You know, tell me about how you were taught to view yourself, you know, because how you view yourself is everything. Now, this is what we are not taught to do in traditional therapy is to perceive, just perceive how you were taught to view yourself. Get out a notebook and write down your perception of self, then read it. Then understand that is not your perception of, that is not you. It represents the perception that you were given by the environment. One of you just, Esther just said guilt tripped. Absolutely, guilt tripped. When you were taught, when you were guilt tripped, then you were taught to worry more about what mom or your daddy thinks or what your sister thinks, or what the neighbor thinks, than what you think, right? So that's what the guilt trip does. That is, if you live with people who guilt tripped, it, tripped you, then that is, that is the breeding ground for codependency. Because now I'm being taught that I should worry about what someone else thinks. I should feel guilty for being me. Um, Random boy, another gamer, you poor thing. You know, we're going to take you off the channel, dear one. Poor thing. Anyway, that's okay. Um, um, Bobby just said, this is like eating a bite of the apple in the Garden of Eden. You can't unsee or unhear this knowledge. You're right. And, um, you know, Frankie just said, I was taught that I was inferior, inferior, totally. And yet you're not, right? So you're not, you, you have to become the absolute ruler of your life. You know, um, you absolutely have to begin stepping out of the box and we don't do it from ego. We do it from the spiritual perspective, thinking that whoever created, um, all that is created you for a glorious purpose. And that was to, you know, some people say to how else would creator get to enjoy the planet, except through the experience of the individual incarnations of physical human beings, right? So how else, how else? It's like when you have a child, right? And you take the child to Disney World, you're experiencing Disney World through the eyes of that child, right? So some people think that we have been born and, you know, we are extensions of creator. And part of the reasoning for us being extensions of creator was so that creator could enjoy creation, right, through our individual experience. Um, I also think that when 
you have felt so out of the box and so disconnected from all that is, you know, and you learn like, wait a minute, I've never been separate from the whole, except when I believed I was. And that can only happen by, 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 because we're all unconscious, right? So in our unconsciousness, we think that we are insignificant. Um, in our unconsciousness, we're buying into this invisible ghost called subconscious programming and codependency, right? So that is why awareness is so important and um, recovery is so important. I will say that um, what I'm trying to do, I have a huge, I think it's a big, I know that there are bigger um, Facebook groups out there, um, but um, I have a Facebook group, probably close to 9,000 members right now. We have we had about 11,000 posts come through our board this month. 700 people tried to join. We only accepted 500 because some looked like they were actually phony and fake profiles. And we really do try to protect the members in the group. And so we really do want to make sure that the people who are trying to join are actually who they say they are. And um, what I'm trying to do in the group is, is, is guide these people towards this, the idea that recovery has to be the goal. Now, some of us will get stuck and some of us will get stuck staying in anger and condemnation, but that is not the goal. The goal is to understand the pieces of the puzzle, understand the hologram, understand the cyclical nature of generations of people, right? This entire planet is a hologram. It's a holographic universe, right? But the ego has us thinking that it's not. The ego has us thinking that everything is separate, that because we're not one anymore, I don't have to worry about what happens to me when I was one. Wrong. You're still one. That experience is still very much alive within you because there is no such thing as time and space. You know, the brain is lin is linear. But and that makes sense because what we're trying to do, um, what we're trying to do on planet Earth is navigate the linear brain and to say namaste to the ego. The ego has a place, you know, in our lives and it helps us move forward. It helps us identify who we are separate from other people, but only so that we can become an individual and sing whatever message has been placed upon our heart. So what happens though, when you're wounded, ego has to go to work for you. Ego has to become a guard. Ego has to become a warrior for you. Ego has to protect you because of you've been wounded. In a perfect world, your id, the very vulnerable, authentic, divine you, would have felt very nurtured. And ego would not feel like it has to defend you, right? So you've been taught, if you're somebody who's stuck you know, um, in defensive mode, then that's a symptom of being wounded as a child and feeling very unprotected. And your ego now has to work overtime to stay on guard. Now, here we go back to energy again. We go back to law of attraction. The problem with that is that what you focus on, you bring about. So here we have another issue. You know, we, our ego is doing the right thing by trying to keep us safe. But here we are attracting exactly what we don't want to experience because that is the nature of the universe. We attract what we focus on, right? Good or bad. And it doesn't matter what you consciously think you're focusing on. What matters most is what's happening to you below the veil of consciousness on a vibrational level, right? That's why it's so important to heal. And what I do is I take people through the 12-week class for three months, and then I ask them to consider taking my master class because that helps people accelerate their beginning to understand their vibrational vibrational patterns. So it's really important that we understand, we begin to put the pieces of the puzzle that is us together with the intention of transcending ego and saying, namaste, higher self has got this. Higher self is awake. I know that my parents messed up. 
right? I know that by, you know, the nature of, of the laws that govern this universe, all human beings are born asleep. I know that my subconscious programs are keeping me stuck. I know that this is a holographic universe. You know, um, I know that, you know, parents do what they have been taught to do by their parents. I know that my parents were below the veil of consciousness. And I know that they had certain belief systems that they believed were true. And they did not live in an era of the internet in most cases. And they were not taught to look beyond, right? And so my parents did to me what was done to them. That doesn't mean they get it pass. You know, that doesn't mean that they have, that they absolutely have, you know, get away with what they've done. We, like the YouTube viewer said, um, what she said was she went ahead and she said something to her dad, you abused me. And then a few weeks later or months later, he died. And she felt so guilty for telling her truth. Right. And so what she wanted to do was she actually felt herself slipping and even wanting to die, feeling so guilty that she had told this person the truth because she knew that when she told her father, I know that you abused me, that he felt it and she could see in him that he was that he was generally hurt or concerned at least by the fact and i think if if this guy if her father was a true narcissist then um you know i think the chances of him genuinely being concerned and hurt that he hurt his daughter are slim what she may what you may have noticed dear one in your father's face is shock and horror that you figured it out right like oh, she figured it out she knows she knows I now know that she knows that I was abusive and oh, the horror that my mask has been pulled off. Um, Bridget, you're 59. Of course, it's not too late. I have people that have taken my program that are much older than you and, you know, they're living their best life now. I don't care if you were 69, wake up, you know, and, and live as much of your life as you possibly can. I don't care if you were two months away from your deathbed, really, right? So if you've got two months of like living your life out loud, not caring what anyone else thinks about you. Now, common sense applies, although some would say common sense is not so common. But when I say live your life and not care what anybody else thinks, what I mean is be a good citizen, work within the laws of your state or your government. You know, do the things that make you feel good. If that means you want to go to the beach every day, find a way to go to the beach every day. If that means that you want to sing, sing. If that means you want to paint, paint. If that means you want to wear purple for the rest of your life, wear purple for the rest of your life, right? You know, and so it's important that when I say not care what else anybody else thinks, I'm not talking about being obnoxious, right? You know, I just had a conversation with my son just this morning. And he's like, mom, like there are just, I noticed that there are people who don't care about other people in their environment. You know, they recently went camping and um, people had their radios on till like five o'clock at night, five o'clock in the morning. And my son was like, mom, you know, how could it be that some people just don't have consideration for other people? And I said, there's a lot of that on this planet, you know? I'm not talking about that type of egocentrism and that type of narcissism because narcissists exploit um, and they feel entitled and they um, do what they want to do in spite of how it affects other people. Somebody with healthy narcissism will follow their own heart, but not at the expense of someone else, right? They will use common sense. So instead of keeping the radio on till five in the morning, the person, a, a person with healthy narcissism looks around this campground, sees that there are babies, right? In the next tent that mom and dad are trying to put them to bed at eight o'clock. Namaste. We, and we'll, we'll turn the radio off at eight o'clock. It's called being a good neighbor.
And we don't do that because we want these people to like us. We do it because it makes good common sense. And we are, tr we are trying to find a way to live with our fellow man. Narcissism makes it almost impossible because a narcissist will not care that you have kids sleeping at eight o'clock at night, right? And so um, someone else, let's say you're at a campground and you have children, right? And you're trying to put these kids to bed at eight o'clock. Somebody with common sense will say, all right, eight o'clock, listen, we were out all day. We played music all day. Eight o'clock, the babies want to go to sleep. We have empathy for our neighbor because we want to get along with people, right? But you'll have a narcissist in the bunch who doesn't give a shit, right? Who is like, I don't care if they have kids up here at eight o'clock. I want to play my music till midnight. And they will go ahead and play their music at midnight. And that is a very adversarial type person. That is someone who does not play nice in the sandbox. And that's a shame. You know, um, karma will find them. And if I was in that situation, I would probably not say anything to the people that were playing the radio. I would probably get up and move. Um, I avoid conflicts this day. Um, I don't look for trouble. And if I find somebody is ornery, it's I just get up and I move, you know, unless that person is sticking his or her finger in my eye. And in certain situations, we have to push back. But I think in uh, many of many of the times we can just namaste, bow to the love and light that's in you. I'm so sorry. You're so below the veil of consciousness and are so ornery. I'm so sorry that that's your experience, you know, and then walk away. Absolutely. It's okay to, um, to, to find, to, uh, walk away and, you know, gain control over your vibrational frequency again. So, um, we're going to try to wrap this up. You know, um, a couple of you have asked me about the next class. My next class actually launches August 2nd and I'm having a live webinar this week, July 19th at 6 p.m. I will include the links sometime today in the description box. So you are welcome to check that out. Um, so if you have come from a dysfunctional home, I want you to start understanding that you are no different. And I truly believe this, I've said this a lot recently, that what happens in one space happens across all space. So what happens in a Petri dish, right? with um, an amoeba or a cell. What happens in a Petri dish, if you have a cell and you put it in a Petri dish that is conducive to growth, that cell will develop beautifully. If you take a cell and you put it into a Petri dish and you put it into a culture media, medium that is um, abrasive, that is um, not conducive to growth, then that cell will suffer the consequences, right? And mutations will take place. Sean just said, my Petri dish was full of bacteria. Okay, that's not your fault. So if you can recognize, if you can just take a moment and have a breakthrough and recognize that none of that was your fault and the way that you think and the way that you feel is a symptom of being put into a difficult culture medium. Um, okay, we got some troll. Ah, oh, Lord. So do you not have anything else to do today, dear trolls? It's a beautiful day. So much good happening in the world. Why, why try to, why try to um, ruin it for other people? Like that's going to come to get you. And that's sad. I wish you luck with that. But anyway, we're moving forward. So um, if you were put into a difficult culture medium as, as a child, know that it's not your fault. And know that the way you think and the way you react and even your belief systems have been affected by this culture medium, right? Very important that you, want, you wake up and you realize that you have been unconscious. Right, very important that you strive for consciousness. You know, the Facebook group that I have, it's it can be difficult sometimes because you know, um, you know, um I think we have to so we can't we can't 
give the finger to anyone. That that defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to transcend. We're trying to understand. We're trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together in our lives so um, so that we can figure out how to transcend and live a more enlightened life so that we can connect to the light that is within us, you know, so that we can connect to the power that is within us so that we can shine our light on in this planet and on this world for other people. So um, we can be an example to people who are still um, below the veil of consciousness. And we can be an example for people who feel stuck, you know, um, and the only way that we can help one another is if we um, help ourselves. And yes, Misery just said, become a beacon to heal others. For an example, we can't heal anybody. What we do is we can inspire faith, we can inspire hope, and eventually that will give way to love, right? So without hope, and that's why I create um, videos, because um, if we can just, what I hear over and over and over in some of the emails that I get is that, you know, Lisa, I was despondent. You know, it was 2.30 in the morning. I just had a fight with my mom, you know, and, and she was calling me filthy, filthy names. And then my father came in and he screamed at me and beat me with a belt. And then I called my boyfriend and he called me a filthy, dirty, rotten bitch, you know, and, and, and you know, then I, I went to school and my, I was bullied at school. You know, I mean, people live these lives. Like it's, it's awful, right? Um, you get someone like that who watches one of my videos and says, oh my God, it, all of this is happening. And I thought it was me. I thought it was because there was something wrong with me. I didn't realize realize that my environment was a mirror to what I had experienced. I didn't realize that everything that was going on around me was essentially a symptom. Here I was taking complete blame. I thought it was all my fault and none of this was my fault, right? Um, and so it's important that we begin to recognize what happened to us how it affected our subconscious programming. We have to come into um, understanding how codependency keeps us blinded to what's really going on and how if you're unaware as to how your childhood affected you, I don't care how many affirmations you do. I don't care how many law of attraction teachers you follow. I don't care how many workshops you go to. I don't care. If you don't understand how your childhood affected your vibrational frequency, right? And your emotional set points, then you will be frustrated and you will feel like it's you, even though it's not you, it's just your programming because you're unconscious to it. And, you know, Cheryl just said, even the Bible says you must renew, renew the mind. You absolutely, I think, you know, um, and Herb just said, try not to be angry anymore. So um, Herb, what you have to do is you have to accept that you're angry, right? Which is new for codependence. Little, when we were, when we were children, we weren't taught that we, our feelings were valid. So, and we're also taught in society that there's something wrong with anger and there's something wrong with being, being depressed. I don't think so. If you've been sexually abused your whole life, you know, by your father and your mother said you were a liar and your sister and your brother think you call you a drama queen, but you were your father's favorite and you've been sexually abused your whole life. And now you're 16 and you're depressed. And uh, a doctor says, Oh, you're depressed. You should not be depressed. I disagree with that. Okay. Because it makes common, it's common sense that a, a child, in this case, a girl, a young child that's been abused, sexually abused by her father, her entire life by a family of, let's say alcoholics who are in denial. And her reality is being denied by mom because she's so dependent upon her husband and so codependent and so worried about what the neighbors think and about what the priest thinks that she cannot come into alignment with her daughter's reality in spite of the fact that it is true because it means emotional, in her case, death. Because what if the people know what's going on behind closed doors? Oh my God, what shame she will feel. That's her programming. What's more important is her, her being the mama bear and taking care of a child and screw what the neighbors think and screw what the priest thinks, right? And locking this man up in jail for abusing her child. That's what should happen, okay? But when you're that child, right, and you grow up and you're depressed, 
There's nothing wrong with you. Nothing wrong with you for being depressed. That is a natural consequence of being put into a Petri dish or a culture medium that is antagonistic to your health and your growth. So no, dear one, you cannot be Susie Sunshine when you've had a father like that. So it is natural and it is normal to be depressed. Natural and normal. We don't want to stay there, right? The goal is to move up the emotional ladder. The goal is recovery. The goal is, hey, my parents abused me. Hey, my mother enabled it. Hey, it wasn't me, it was them. Hey, my father would continually molest me. He was he was drunk. You know, he would take me out to bars. He would spike my milk. He would abuse me in the back of the car. I would wake up in the middle of it and he would tell me to shut up and never tell anybody. When I did tell people, everybody that I spoke to told me that I was crazy. Of course you're depressed. Who wouldn't be? Are you kidding me? Human beings are born to be loved. And when that's not your experience, you're going to feel depressed. And that's normal. So we have to stop judging ourselves, right? So um, Amber just said depression diagnosed at 12 and started self-harm. It was horrible. I'm free now. Awesome. Um, there's a reason. This is a cause and effect universe, okay? Nothing happens by chance. Absolutely nothing. So if some somebody is um, depressed, understand, well, we have to start thinking as, as human beings, right? We have to break through the programming. We have to break through what's happening in a lot of psychiatrists and therapists' office today. We have to know that it is our job to understand why we're depressed, right? And we are not being babies and we are not being drama queens because we are saying, my mother said this and my father did that and my siblings, this was their experience. And I went to school, I was bullied. You have to put the connections back together, right? What will happen is many people will say, ah, oh, that happened a long time ago. Ah, oh, they shouldn't bother you. Oh, your parents. No, don't talk to those people, okay? I would rather you take a journal and make the connections all by yourself and have this just happen in your own head and have you work it out in your own head than to talk to people that don't get it, right? The worst thing you can do is talk to somebody who doesn't understand you because it's just going to confuse you more. So the minute you talk to somebody and you get the hint that they can't hear you, stop talking. That is your control. You have the power to control that. Stop talking to people who don't want to hear you. It is unhealthy. Talk to yourself. Get your cell phone out, record your conversations, write it out in a notebook, see the connections, see the connections. The minute you talk to somebody and yes, Jeffrey just said it's re-traumatizing. It is so re-traumatizing. So re -tra how about, how about when you tell somebody, this was my experience when, you know, here I was thinking that I was being, you know, an open and vulnerable young wife telling my ex-husband, you know, um, all of my feelings and what I experienced as a, as a child, my parents, right. Opening up to him, thinking I can save, like I can safely tell him what I was feeling wrong, wrong, because the minute I didn't do what I wanted him to do what the minute I didn't do, the minute I didn't do what he wanted me to do, or the minute I said, Hey, you know, you said you were going to do this. Why did you do that? He came out with no wonder your parents thought you were a bitch. No wonder your parents think you're a psycho. No wonder your brother doesn't like you. It was like, Oh my God, it totally re-traumatized me. That at that time in my life, that sucked me down the rabbit hole, the codependent rabbit hole because I really thought it was me. I did not realize that speaking to someone that way meant most likely you were on the narcissistic spectrum. You had no empathy for the person that you were talking to that you were supposed to love, right? I didn't, I wasn't able yet to pin the tail on the donkey and say, wow, that's abusive language. Like, wow, I trusted you. Wow, you just tried to hurt me. That came many years later, you know, probably about year 12 when I began to understand codependency and this idea that I was subconscious and, and the life was holographic and I was beginning to put the law of attraction all together. And I was really starting to understand 
the puzzle that I was from the observer space, not from the reactive space. I was really starting to get it. I was able to say, wow, wow. Like what he just said was abusive. And I was finally able to get separation between me and him. And what I realized was the way that he spoke to me was abusive. And so then all of a sudden his words, they weren't able to hurt me anymore. All of a sudden what he said, like ricocheted off of me. I was more focused on, focused on what he said and how he said it. That became my focus. And um, when I was able to identify his behavior as abusive, that's when I really started to feel liberated, you know? So pay attention to the way people speak to you. Um, the other thing that I want to say before, before we go is that, you know, um, this is particularly, men do this too, you know, but this is particularly true of women when they get frustrated and they get upset, they cry and, you know, they, they break down and then they try to tell the person that, that they're with, let's say in this situation, their partner is, um, a man, right. Um, and we, we, as women break down and we try to tell our boyfriends or our husbands or our fathers or our brothers how we're feeling. Um, oftentimes, you know, what we're saying gets lost, right? Um, I think what I, what I want to say to anybody who, um, who, who tends to really get emotional when upset and starts to cry, that is not the time to have conversations with somebody else. That is the absolute worst time to want to talk to somebody, okay? Um, so my suggestion is, dear ones, is when you begin to get emotional, give yourself a half an hour. Go into the tub. Cry your eyes out. Get it all out, right? Give yourself some time. Get out a notebook. And then identify what's really, really bothering you, okay? Um, so Cheryl just said, can't talk to anyone in their pain body. Everybody has a pain body. We've all been wounded. We carry generations of trauma. None of us exist. None of us escape, excuse me. All of us exist, but none of us escape the pain body. At least I don't think so, okay? Um, we, can, we can escape it and we can resolve it, but it takes some time. It takes some skill. It takes practice, right? You can't do this in an hour video. You have to practice this. This is, this is a life change. And so what I suggest to people is if you tend to get very emotional, know that when you're emotional is not the time to have a conversation. That is the worst time. So when you start to get upset, grab a hold of yourself, spend some time with your inner child, go into the bathroom, cry, do whatever you have to do, cry, get it all out, right? Then give yourself time right? Get that energy out of you, right? Because when you're at the point where you're highly emotional, to me, it's like the bat, bat, the bats that have been released from the belfry, right? Like, or Pandora's box, all this energy is coming out of you quickly and you can't control it, which means you can't control your vibrations, which means you can't control your intentions, which means you can't control your words, right? And so what you want to do, dear one, is give yourself the time to release all that energy, right? Then center yourself, maybe do a meditation. Then write out specifically what you want to say to this person. Keep this in mind. You cannot control other people, nor should you try. You don't want to be in relationships with people that you feel like you have to control them, right? So no more of being a square, trying to shove yourself inside a hole, right? You are a square, then you try to find another square. When you're looking through relationships, relationships should, it's just like I said, what happens in one space happens across all space. When you're trying on a pair of shoes, that's like you trying on a relationship. When you try on a pair of shoes and they don't fit, you just go, hmm, they don't fit. This is uncomfortable. I'm not in alignment with these shoes. They don't quite fit the way I want them to. You know, they hurt my ankles or they, my toes are scrunched up. My feet just can't be my feet. They're stuck. They're just, they're just being constricted. And what we do is we take the shoes off and we put them back on the shelf, right? It's the same thing with a relationship. When you're, or a class or a career or a friendship, right? It has to feel right. 
you have to feel in alignment with it. And if you don't, take it off. It's totally fine to say, it's not working out. I thought it would, but it's not. And I wish you well, but this isn't working, right? And then you you try out relationships that feel like they do work. But if you are trying to stick yourself, if you're a square, we're all squares, and if you're trying to stick yourself into a hole, you have to acknowledge that. My relationship with my ex-husband was like that for 12 long years. I kept trying to push this relationship, kept trying to make it work. I would cry. I would stamp my feet. I would become completely exasperated, trying to push and trying to shove and trying to get him to see what I wanted him to see. And he wasn't having it. He wasn't having it. And then one day I realized, I began to grow up, and I realized I should have never tried to change him. I should have just accepted that he was the way he was. And I should have accepted that this did not fit. I didn't know that I was stuck. I didn't know that I was codependent. I didn't know that I was below the veil of consciousness. I didn't understand my vibrational patterns were activated. I didn't know that I was 85 or 90% water and I was vibrating at a particular frequency with a particular energy and that my emotional set point was actually keeping me stuck inside relationship dynamics that were actually adversarial and abrasive. I didn't know that I was doing that in my adult life because that's what I had experienced in my childhood. I didn't know that. But when I began to wake up, so much peace came over me. And I realized that I was wrong for trying to change this man. I was wrong. He is now in a relationship with somebody that he gets along with just fine, you know, and, you know, she's very happy with him. You know, I personally think it's a codependent relationship, just my opinion from the outside looking in. But again, that's just my humble opinion. And he likes being taken care of. And she likes catering to him. And so it works, right? So now he's not being yelled at or bitched at or complained at by someone like me who's like, something wrong here, you know? He is very happy. I am in a relationship today with somebody who is very much like myself, you know, very independent, um, enjoys his alone time. I enjoy my alone time. We both love to travel, we both love growing. We both um, love our children and they are a priority. Um, we both really want to be self-aware people. Um, we both have very high empathy for one another. We're very, very considerate of one another. I did not feel like my ex was considerate of anyone unless he was trying to bamboozle them, unless he was trying to manipulate them or get out of trouble. Then he could show compassion for people. But then again, that's my experience. He would tell you different. And that's totally fine. And his girlfriend would tell you different. And that's totally fine. This is just my experience. Um, and so I really hope that this live stream has helped you feel more grounded and more, more centered. You know, that's awesome if that, that is the case. Um, I do want you guys to know that I, my next 12-week breakthrough class launches August 2nd. You can find out more about it by going to www.lisaramon.com. And in the header bar, click 12-week program. We launch it August 2nd. I actually moderate the group with about five other moderators who have been through both my classes, the 12 week and the master class. And they also moderate my large Facebook group. Um, so they're very skilled at what they do. Um, in my large Facebook group, we're not there to coach people. We're there to moderate and guide. Um, we don't get too involved in conversations. We just make sure that the conversations are fair and respectful. Um, People do get coached and do get more guidance in the 12 week groups. I just don't feel like it's our place on a large Facebook group to um, coach people that didn't ask to be coached, you know. And Facebook can be a rabbit hole. Anybody who's been who's been a part of a Facebook community, you know how quickly posts can go bad. 
So if you're interested in um, finding a place where you can talk about your experience in a codependent family in a safe place, then please check out our Facebook group for adult children of alcoholics and um, narcissistic parents. We'd love to have you. If you do decide to become a part of that community, you will be asked to provide a um, valid Facebook profile. Um, and, and you're going to have to ask, I think, three questions. Otherwise, your profile will be denied. It's just the way we keep members safe. Um, so thank you so, so, so much for being here. Um, and I hope that this has helped you become a little bit more aware of what may be keeping you stuck. And I hope it also helps you understand that affirmations do not work. And, you know, thinking you're following the law of attraction um, will actually frustrate you more if you don't understand your subconscious programs and if you don't get a hold of your perceptions of self and you don't understand that what needs to be molded first is your perception of self. And what you have to understand is that your current perception of self, if it's anything but positive, that means that somebody helped create this negative perception of you. And that's programming, right? So you are absolutely enough. You are absolutely divine. You are absolutely worthy. There are life skills that you can learn to help you take control over your emotions, to accept how you feel, feel what you feel, and make decisions about what is best for you. You can be taught how to let go. You can be taught how to live a non-resistant lifestyle. That takes practice, right? It doesn't happen overnight. If you've been abused, don't expect yourself to know how to get healthy because it's like, you know, would you expect you know, um, somebody who's grown up in Japan to know how to speak English? No, that defies logic, right? It's like I said before, what happens in one space happens across all space. Do not expect yourself to know how to love yourself if you never felt loved. You have to learn how to do that, right? Do not expect yourself to know how to be happy if your parents are miserable people. Children have to resonate with the same frequency of their parents. So if your home life was miserable and unhealthy and, you know, had a very low vibration to survive, you had to resonate with that frequency. If you didn't, there was danger was going to happen for you. You had to resonate with your parents' frequency. The great thing is that you can break through, right? And that's why I call myself the Breakthrough Life Coach because I want to help people like you break through, you know? So please check out my website at www.lisaromano.com. I also have another website that is up. Um, I have two websites active now that, you know, hopefully will merge soon. You can go to um, https dot dot slash slash Lisa dash a dash Romano, R-O-M-A-N-O dot my m y kajabi k a j a b i dot com, and you can check out my recent blog posts. You can also find me on Insight Timer. I have dozens of free podcasts and meditations that you can listen to for free, um, and I have over four hundred YouTube videos that you can mark off. Right, you can create your own playlist, and that's one way that you can make sure that you've actually watched every video is to create a Lisa Iramano playlist. And go back to my earliest videos, watch them in once a day or once a week, whatever it is, watch another video, add it to your playlist. And then you know if you've watched that video already. I do, I do know that, um, that we are unlearning and relearning. So do not expect to know this information from watching one video, right? Because your brain has space for short-term memory, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this information and shunt it to the neocortex where it can be downloaded as long-term memory. So know that you have to do things repetitiously and continuously, right? Repetition, observation, and consistency will create long-term memory. Um, oh, troll alert. Wow. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on hide this person. We want to delete this person from the entire. Okay, cool. That's awesome. I actually, they actually alerted me to a troll alert. That was just awesome. How sad. 
that trolls exist. Whatever. It's like life. We gotta learn, we gotta learn to roll with it and not let them, you know, you know, um, gray rock us, maybe, but I prefer to like completely avoid if I can. Why do I want them in my experience, right? Later. Just not worth it. My vibrations, I try to keep my vibrations high. And I think sometimes when I think gray rock is awesome in a lot of situations, but um, you're right. I need a moderator. I need a channel moderator. You're right. I'll, I'll look into that. Um, but me, I want to maintain my vibrations. That's what I have control over. Life is just too damn awesome for me not to maintain my vibrations and attract amazing love and joy and happiness and peace and contentment. So dear ones, you can check me out on Insight Timer, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Please follow my boards if you like. Um, and um, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get alerted every time I do a live stream. And if you're interested, like I said, in, in, in the class, I have a, a live webinar this Thursday. You know, you'll be learning a lot, a, lot, a lot about the brain and a lot about abuse and a lot about what you need to know to heal and to take new information and shunt it to long-term memory. Okay. Cause that's what we need. We need this information to be part of our long-term memory bank. So I will see you guys soon. Namaste. I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. Bye.